always attempt to set your partner up to win. Have conversations about what it is that you what what it is that they like, what it is that you like. Keep that dialogue open. Um, and then go from there. Try navigating that way just by having a conversation outside of the bedroom. Like, hey, I'm interested in, you know, you doing this. How do you feel about that? What do you like? You know, how can I? So when there's no spark in the, in the love life, how do you get it back? The same way you got it in the beginning. Like, I, first of all, acknowledge that it's, n it's normal. Like, that's a normal part of evolving. It's a normal part of relationships. We all have our ebb and flow. So don't be intimidated if you look up one day and it's gone. It's just an opportunity. I, I What I tell people all the time is act like it's an opportunity for you to date somebody new. You know, you find out what what about that person? Um, what about your partner? Do they like? Do they enjoy? What they liked 10 years ago ain't going to be the same as what they like today. So it's just acknowledging that that's a normal part of evolving. It's a normal part of growth. So go with it and do the same. Pull out all the stops that you did in the beginning the same way, you know, pull those same stops out again and try to woo your partner over. You'll find that not only will it benefit getting to know them better and on a deeper level, but it's also exciting and it gives you a challenge to pursue them as well. And this works both ways, not just for the man to pursue the woman or not just for the woman to pursue the man, but for, for, for both parties. If you notice that spark is gone, start finding out about your partner, get to know them again. Like what makes them tick now? What do they like now? Putting forth that quality time, um, making sure you get to know them one-on-one -on -one again. Mm. And I like that you said that this per that whoever you're with, they change over time. Mm -hmm. And yourself too. Like you, you won't be the same person that you were 10 years ago. I pray to God you're not. Like it's just a part of human nature. Like you just evolve and grow. Yeah. Because, you know, you might say something and they like, I didn't know you like that. You like. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and exploring for you too, staying on top of things because, like, that's another thing. Our desires change as well. So just because. You know, it, it may, you might have a guy, you know, I don't know, like say you used to love getting your neck licked or mm -hmm. whatever. And eventually like, it's just like, ah, that don't do it for me anymore. It's your job and your responsibility to find out what does so that you can set your partner up to win. Mm, I like that. I like that. Because sometimes you, so you know when you change when someone or whoever you're with that they might do something that you used to like and then all of a sudden you're just like, I ain't feeling that no more. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's very important to communicate that. And a good way to communicate it is approach. Approach is everything. It's not just don't leave that. Nah, I don't like that no more. Set mm -hmm. them up to win. That's what I was just saying. Like It's very important for you to know what you like. So if they do try something that you don't like anymore, say babe can you do this instead like that that don't do it for me anymore you know but can you do this instead and give them something to work with mm, yeah you gotta have a conversation it ha and it has to be respectfully um, mm -hmm. so that way they could be a little more open to what you're saying because you know you can be, get caught up in the spur of the moment you're like oh and, and it just kills the whole vibe right it Exactly. And then there's, there's rejection that you got to deal with and all those other things. So just nip it in the bud in the beginning. Give them something good to work with. Know what it is that you like and set them up to win by sharing that with them. Set them up to win. I should mm -hmm. use a hashtag or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll set them up to win. Get them what it is that they need. Get them what it is that they're looking for. Mm hmm so what's the biggest mistake men make in the bedroom? <laughs> Thinking about themselves, not paying attention to what it is that their partner is into and making it all about just getting a nut or either wanting to see her nut, like connect with your partner, slow down, like take the time, find out what, 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 
your partner like find out you know try different things on their bodies like try different things like for yourself but don't make it all about wham bam thank you ma'am like slow down get to know them Mm -hmm. do you do you find that that happens more in um the kind of wham bam thank you ma'am thing you think that's more of like people that you're say kind of dating opposed to like relationship type think about think about it. it it's in both it's in all aspects but a lot of guys with dating now and i think that's why the orgasm gap is so high because a lot of men just go into it with it's all about i'm gonna try this if this is on work then oh well she gotta get hers i got mine like it's that selfish mentality but i don't think that it's just in the dating realm it's easy to get that way in long-term committed relationships as well because you got to think about the in and out the the day-to-day basis like the things get boring so it's like ah let me just get this nut off like let me just do this like it there's really not a lot of excitement when it come down to um couples in in long-term relationships and I see that a lot with the couples that I work with. Um, and it's just a matter of like getting creative, trying new things, finding out what it is that you like, finding out what it is that your partner like. But it is so easy to get caught up in that in a long term relationship. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because uh, transparent moment, you know, I'm just like, you know, my wife, you know, she always makes sure I'm good, you know. But sometimes I'm just like, let me, you know, let me, let me just, let me just make sure you good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Me, you know, just that mindfulness. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it should definitely be reciprocated on both ends because, uh oh, if you think about it, and that one person is always trying to make the other person good, like eventually it gets to the point where it's done out of obligation, and that takes away from the passion and the connection. It makes sex boring when it's just to get the nut off, when it's just to make sure that my partner is good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think I know for guys, a lot of that stuff in Python came from porn, you know. Mm-hmm. Somebody you- said I'm squirting. Ugh, I could write a whole book on squirting. Like, can you, can you talk about that for a minute? Because there's some <laughs> people in here, and I've I've been watching the reels and all this other stuff. Cause I follow you, you know. So, can you talk about that? <laughs> As <laughs> As I I feel like it's a huge misconception, and I I was thinking about it earlier when I look at all the comments and all the back and forth, like. And to me, it's like, that's why so many women struggle with their sexuality. Think about it. When a man ejaculate, ain't nobody questioning what's in that, what's in the semen. Ain't nobody. You can ask everybody, ask it, what, what's in semen? Ain't nobody going to have nothing to say because it's conditioned for them to think that it's normal. So whatever that man is leading with, whatever he's bringing to the table, it's like we're forced to accept it. And I look at all the comments from the women and the women was like, I hold back because I'm scared. Is it pee? Like, what the fuck? It don't matter if it's pee or not. Like, it's your body's natural way of releasing it. Now, I can understand from experience if you squirt it and it smelt like pee, it smelt like urine, it stained the bed, like it stained air. I could 1000% understand that. But from experience, I know that it's a clear liquid that actually come out. Like it's not as most people portray it to be. And that's why I said in my reel, a lot of these people who leave in these comments are not squirters because if they were, they would understand that one, it's involuntary. Like when the body is stimulated a certain way, it's a woman's natural reaction like to to release in that manner. You literally like check out completely. Like it's like you go into another dimension for a moment. And from a man perspective, they they watch it and they see that it's kind of like reflex. You know, you hit it and the knee jump. Like there's no control over that. And that's why I say like a lot of men who who condemn it, either they don't know how to bring their partner to climax or either they're stuck in that mindset where they're 
adding shame to the woman because, oh, this might be peak. Now, I also said there has been study after study after study after study. Don't nobody know what it is. Don't know. Like, even with all of the studies, like, people come at me with this study about the blue dye. I said, that's the, so, have, are you familiar with that study? I was about to say, can you talk about that, please? Yes, yes. So this is the study, right? They had all of the women empty their bladders. Then they took this blue dye, put it back in the bladder, and then they had the women go and, you know, do their thing, and then they squirt. So when they squirted, blue dye was everywhere. It was a mess. And they said, okay, well, it's majority of urine because all of this blue dye is over the place. I said, that's the dumbest study they could have did because the first thing when it come down to teaching a woman how to squirt, the first thing that I tell them to do, empty your bladder because the liquid that come out if it's coming out through the urethra what's going to happen is going to push all the contents from the bladder including urine out with it so if they fill it back up of course it's going to come out like of course it will be urine but what are you saying that it is when they empty the bladder there is no urine in their bladder and they still squirt that's not urine they even tested it so what was mixed with the blue dye is prostate uh prostate something antigens i don't know like i something that can only come from the female prostate and a lot of people was like oh females don't have yes they do have prostates like do your due diligence don't just read one article and hold on to that and use that as the truth do all the research all the round. So what, what I say, and the reason why I say nobody knows what it is, is because I've seen study after study after study after study, not just with the blue dye, but I've been studying this for years, for years. I've been, I had to put my business out there, but I was squirting before I even knew what squirting was. I did not understand. And when it first happened to me, I was completely embarrassed. And it's like, people don't understand the shame and the stigma that they connect to women in their sexuality because of the way that they're, it's, it's a lack of ignorance. It's a lack of ignorance. And that's why I've been so passionate about this, this squirting thing is because there's shame and women and women are clenching up and not allowing their body to actually be free and have that experience of ejaculating the same way a man would. So that's that's my two cent on squirting. I know I went on a whole tangent, a whole rant, but that's exactly how I feel about it. And it's kind of like like say, let me see. Mm -hmm. I had a seminar, a workshop last month, and I had cocky the cucumber out, but I put them back. So let's just say, right? I got this weight. Let's just say this is a man's penis, and if I'm stimulating this penis in a certain way, back and forth, back and forth, whatever. Eventually, what's going to happen? He's going to be aroused. And he's going to ejaculate. Squirting is the same way. And it's involuntary, whether he want it or not. It's science. The same way, like your taste buds, right? Say you didn't want to eat cake and I walked up to you and I smashed cake in your mouth. And you, what's, what's going to happen? Whether you wanted it or not, you still going to taste it. It's the body's natural response. That's the number one thing that women deal with with sexual trauma. And this is something that I, too, had to experience. It's like climaxing even when you didn't want it so say a woman is raped or whatever and she still climax that's like one of the worst feelings in the whole world because it's like why did my body respond in pleasure even though i wasn't enjoying this act like why did i climax from it as if i was still enjoying it same thing with the taste buds. It's science. Our bodies are designed to react and operate a certain way. So it's an automatic reaction to something, a certain stimulation within our body. So, okay, I'm going to be quiet now. I don't know. I went on and on and on about squirting, but that's my two cents. I'm very passionate about it <laughs> because of, you know, the stigma behind it. Always pee, always urine. If you understand how the body work as well as set set up the measures that are needed you it can be an enjoyable experience for all and it's instant gratification for men like to see that i'm doing this and their body reacts 
they don't have control over it. Like you can't fake a squirt. You can fake an orgasm. You can fake the breathing, but you can't fake a squirt. Period. Mm -hmm. You can pee if you want. <laughs> I don't even know if that will work scientifically. Like can women just actually sit there and pee like during say, I don't know. <laughs> um, I'm just gonna leave it at that. <laughs> No, this is good because, I mean, of course, you know, there's a lot, like I said, there's a lot of stigma behind it because I've heard a lot of negative commentary about that as well. So I'm glad that you clarified that. So once we get to share this video, uh, we're going to make sure that that, that gets, you know, um, but I know you talk about it a lot. So I appreciate what you do in that area because we need to address this, especially with men. Cause a lot of times men, we just ignorant to a lot of stuff, especially mm -hmm. in the bedroom. In the bedroom, yeah. area went out a bit. That's my connection. Yeah. Kind of oh, no. Can you hear me now? I can hear you, yeah, but your video is a little choppy. Uh-oh, should I log off and come back in? What you want me to do? Uh, you can log off and come back in. Okay, I'll be right back. All right, well, Sherelle will be right back with us because Sherelle got bars on top of bars concerning sex. That's why I had her on today because we need to discuss this stuff. All right, I invited her back into the room. Uh, if there's any questions, um, I have a couple of more questions, but if you all have any questions, I'll see if Sherelle can maybe stick around for a minute. I'll maybe even cut the interview short a little bit if you all have some questions for Sherelle. So um, thank you all for coming in and hanging out with us tonight. So feel free to ask those questions and I will read them off because I have a couple that uh, I want to know as well. <laughs> so uh, how's everyone's night going? Also, I want to, uh, can you all tag 10 people, tag 10 people and bring them into the room? Because this is a conversation that we got to have for men and women so we can kill the ignorance. So I need you all, can you find me in the New York area? So I need you all to, uh, to tag I need you all to tag at least 10 people and bring them in the room so we can debunk these myths. Is oh, it working? There we go. We're good. Is it working? Okay. It wasn't showing on my end. Now, is it working? We good? Good now. All right. Perfect. Yeah, for sure. Um, okay. Yeah, we, we talked about squirting. Okay. <laughs> Got that. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that reel got a lot of a lot of plays and that, that shows you know the curiosity of people, right? Yeah. Yeah, one thousand percent. And I hate I like my heart go out to the women who feel like they have to hold back, you know, and feel like they can't express themselves because they're afraid of it being pee and then them being shunned up on and so on and so forth. I just add think it's one of those things that adds to you know the stigma of a woman actually being able to be sexually free mm, yeah yeah because I've had people ask about stuff like that about holding back orgasms because they just weren't sure you know or, or they might might have been shamed in the past and those thoughts are triggered yep you know yep and then especially like in, in order for a woman to really experience certain type of orgasms, um, they have to feel safe. And that safety is not something that is created within the bedroom or created between two partners. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I was doing some some research on that. I can say the, the, the safety of uh, knowing that we're good. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, because women, y'all all connected. Have you ever read that book called uh, "Men Are Like Waffles and Women Are Spaghetti"? 
Mm-mm. Never. I thought you was going to say men are from, women oh. are from Venus, men are from Mars. That's a that's a classic book, but mm -hmm. there's another one that's called Women Are Spaghetti and Men Are Waffles. Never even heard of it. <laughs> Great book if you get a chance to read it. Basically, it's talking about how women are interconnected with spaghetti. You know, you're interconnected. Oh. Everything is attached. So, and I'm saying that to say that leading up to the bedroom, right? You know, you just can't expect to treat her like trash throughout the day. And then... Mm -hmm. To, to be a porn star to you at night. Exactly. Exactly. So <laughs> that's a good book. Oh, uh, I wanted to know this. I want to know what you think about this. What? How would you define sexual compatibility? Sexual compatibility. Sexual compatibility. Um, similar interests. Mm -hmm. Also, time span. Like. You know, how, how often you want to have sex, mm -hmm. how long you want to go when you have sex, um, the morals and, and values and interests in the bedroom, you know, like kink, um, fetishes, uh, and like that. Huh? I want to talk about that as well. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, I think like being on the same page, like the same way you would be mentally compatible with somebody is like you have similar morals, you have similar values, you have similar interests. And I think it's the same thing when it comes down to sexual compatibility, like you're kind of and it doesn't mean you have to be completely the same, but it does have to be compatible. Like, for example, cuckolding or however you say it, cock holding, cuck holding, like however you pronounce it. Like you have to be with somebody who's open to being with somebody else in order for that to actually work. Like that's compatibility. Um, similar interests, like for example, anal sex. Like it's, it's a huge no for me. I couldn't be with somebody who preferred anal sex like that sexual incompatibility but say for example if my partner liked it and they were open and willing to get it holidays then that's compatibility you know like we can work with that it's something to work with but not if it's a hard no for you know either party that's incompatibility i love that yeah that's good that's good because christmas is right around the corner so <laughs> <laughs> you are hilarious. Perfect time. It was <laughs> you know, <laughs> what you say? I said you get your Christmas gift, right? Correct. Correct. <laughs> correct. Correct. Yeah. Uh I wanted to talk about well, we'll talk about that at the end. But what is considered horrible sex? Oof. Be fixed. And how do you station? Huh? How do you have that conversation? Okay, so so this is a couple of things. So first one, horrible sex. Horrible sex is just out of sync. Like, the organs not working appropriately. Just being mismatched. No flow. Just like, I say odors, uncleanliness. Like, I, I consider all of that, like, horrible sex. Like, you could have kept it. Being selfish. Selfish is another thing. That's mm -hmm. horrible sex. Um, incompatibility, like it's horrible sex. Forcing someone is another thing, like that's horrible sex. Being inconsiderate, so all of those things, horrible sex. Trash D, which is kind of like you don't even know what you're doing with a lack of confidence. <laughs> I could go on and on and on. Dry cookie, soft D, like <laughs> yeah. older. um yeah 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 all of those i i think is trash mm. um how can it be fixed having the hard conversations um but again with the hard conversations it's all about approach you know it's not just about your d trash like i'm not satisfied that was you know that sucked or even silence Silence is not a good approach. Or even them asking for your feedback and you're not telling the truth. That's not a good approach. But a good approach would be, 
I always encourage my clients, leave with the compliment, hit them with the blow, spice it back up with another compliment. And then also asking for feedback for, you know, is there anything that I can do to help you? All about staying focused on the solution. You, you, you focus on the good parts, what you do like, bring in what you don't like, provide them with the solution, compliment, then excuse me, get back to, is there anything that I can do to assist or something to that extent? Mm. I like that because a lot of times when we think about, you know, we just think about, you know, bad sex and horrible sex. We just think about, oh, he, you know, his, you know, his D wasn't big enough for it. But I, I, I like that you talked about uh, odors and just all these different things, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Mm-hmm. Hey, that's that's good because I I never thought of that. I always just think of just the the basic stuff, you know. How do you tell somebody that they stink? You know, it's not an easy thing to do. But again, you start off with the compliment, like, "Hey, babe, I really enjoyed our session last night. You were super wet. I have to share something with you and be vulnerable. I have to share something with you that's hard for me to say." But I think that it will really help us in the long run. And I know, whatever, you just go into the whole thing. I don't know. Like, I noticed that there was an odor coming from below, and that's typically not like you. Is there something that I should be concerned about, that we should be concerned about? How can we address that? Is there something that I can do to help you with that? And if we did correct it, I think it will make it more enjoyable for the both of us. I can go down on you freely, focus on the solution. So I know I'm just throwing that out there, but, uh, you know, like it ain't spiced up. Practice what you're going to say before you say it. It should feel good, even though there is this hint of, you know, um, what is it? A hint of uncomfortable that come along with it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. what if they're like a newbie though like what if this is what if this is your first time and it's do you still have that conversation because it can really it can you know you just i don't know if you really know that person oh gosh you know what it's so funny that you asked that because i was gonna do a reel about that last night and then i ended up doing it about the squirting i went to the spa the other day right I was really looking forward to this, like this spa, this massage, this bath. Like it was just amazing. Full service spa. Uh, It's time for the massage. And, you know, she started off going strong, started off good. But I felt her hand like it was it was rough. And for (laughs) me, I was like, okay, do I sit here for the rest of this hour and not enjoy it? Or do I ask for what it is that I want? And I share with her, you know, your pressure is great, but can you use a little bit more oil? I want it to be, you know, a a little bit smoother. So yeah, okay, I'll do that. But then she got mad. She got an attitude, like, because I asked her to do it. So she doing her technique and I'm like, damn, I don't feel nothing. Like, yeah. I feel like this is like a waste of time, you know, and then I'm I'm saying I'm battling with myself. Like, I don't even know how to tell her the right technique to do to massage me, but I'm not satisfied. Right. Mm -hmm. So I started thinking, I was like, this must be what men experience, you know, when it come down to head or like when it come down to sex, like, it's like, you're there, you're doing the do, you're doing the job, but it's just not satisfying at all. And especially when her hands was rubbing up against me, I'm like, that's what must be what it feel like when they're having sex with somebody who's not as lubricated or either if they're giving them head and it's not a lot enough, you know, liquid. Like, how do you ask for that? How do you ask? Can you make it wetter? You know, <laughs> like, like, can we just lube? Like, can we, but what was your question? Because I went on in that, that whole tangent because I could relate. Oh, you asked if it was new and in the beginning. Yeah. like yeah. New- So I, I wholeheartedly believe, again, with what I was saying before, always attempt to set your partner up to win. Have conversations about what it is that you, what, what it is that they like, what it is that you like. Keep that dialogue open 
Um, and then go from there, try navigating that way just by having a conversation outside of the bedroom. Like, hey, I'm interested in, you know, you doing this. How do you feel about that? What do you like? You know, how can I make you feel comfortable? Just having conversations that way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I wanted to ask you about, I seen a reel and you talked about like, if the if the head is trash. <laughs> can, can you talk about that just a little bit, please? Yes. <laughs> so so this is another thing, right? Which I noticed. I used to hear men say it all the time. Like she just got my D in her mouth. She's not sucking dick. She just got my D in her mouth. And like for me, that's like gut wrenching. I'm like, no, this is like the most vulnerable act that you can do to a man by performing oral sex on him. And you're down there and it's trash. Like that's to me, it's a waste of time. Like what what are you even doing? Why are you even down there? So I think it's, it's very important for women. And women know, you know you down there and you don't know what you're doing. Like, be honest with yourself. I got the basics of fellatio. You can click the link in my bio. You can purchase that. But I also do private sessions for fellatio. You know when you go down there, you ain't confident or either his response. Like, maybe you do have this energy and you are good on that aspect. But like where you believe you're doing a great job, but the results speak for themselves. I had a client who I was recently working with. She went through my fellatio mastermind intensive and she came to me and she was like, you know, I've been with my husband for like 16, 17 years. I only made him come from head like once or twice. Like I'm, I'm, I want to, you know, do it. She was like, I feel like I used to be good at it. Now I, I don't, I really don't know. It's like, I got you. We worked together one month. Three weeks in, I think it was the third week. Three weeks in, I received a message. I did it. She was like, I, I took him out of the game in six minutes. And that hadn't happened before. It, she said she made him come, I think, like twice. Um, but they've been together like 17 years. And I told you, like, I got you. It's all about confidence and it's all about skill set. Like, act, be real with yourself. If you don't know what you're doing, reach out for help. And the same thing with fellas. I wish I had my diagram out because I would show them. Uh, some guys I heard don't even know what the clitoris is, where it is, and they just down there licking and sticking. You know, their tongue in and everywhere. Again, if you, if she ain't asking you for head, if she ain't begging you for it, if she ain't climaxing for it, bruh, step your head game up. I got a link in my bio for you too. <laughs> it's just eating the box, the basics of eating the box, which is performing cunnilingus oral sex on a female. Reach out for help. Like I, I think a lot of us know where we lack, but we try to fake it and we try to deny it. Don't do that. Don't do it. <laughs> so you're saying that women actually, or men actually, they might not know what they're doing, but they just do it out of obligation or like they feel like i gotta do this to get him women have sex to get love men have sex as a simple pleasure so a lot of women they'll put themselves in situations where they'll go forth and they'll do it even though they really don't know what they're doing but the this is the thing that i noticed with men men who don't know what they're doing they'll be like i don't like eating that like i don't like eating a cookie nah nigga oh excuse my language but yeah, nah, you just don't know <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sorry, I'm the West Side trying to creep up. <laughs> but no, nah, you just don't know what you're doing. Like, that's that's what it is. It's not that you don't like it. You just don't know how. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> No, no, that, that's real. I appreciate that because you helping somebody tonight. <laughs> Before we go, I, because there was, uh, I was promoting this on social media and I got an inbox. <clears throat> And lady asked about what is kink and what are some examples of that? Okay. So let me clarify. Um, kink and fetish are similar, but the biggest difference is a fetish is 
need it in order for somebody to experience sexual pleasure. But the way that they're similar is like, it's typically something odd that brings sexual pleasure and sexual arousal, something that's not typically mainstream. Mainstream is like oral sex. Um, anal sex can be considered like a kink, but in some ways it is more accepted than like, mm, what's, what's some kinks? Some kinks are like BDSM. Mm -hmm. the role play um age play there's different levels of kink you know some people like playing as animals um it's it's you know certain locations but the difference the biggest thing is when it comes down to kinks it's like i like this and it's not the typical norm um, a fetish is, I like this, I need this, and it's not a typical norm. So I wanted to break that down because some people think like, oh, foot fetish, like that's the kink. It's a form of the kink, but the fetish is, I need this. You can have a kink foot, you know, interest where I want her feet on me. It's not something that you need, but it's something that you like and you want. Mm -hmm. I hope that Yes. Uh, and I was wondering, like, where does, is that something that you just, do you experience it? Or like, how do you develop a kink? Because everybody kinks are different, right? Yeah. So, yeah. like, is it, an, is it an, an experiences? Is it something that they saw? And I'm asking out of ignorance, because I don't know. Yeah. So I, this is one of the things that intrigued me. I, I study, uh, Oh, gosh, I can't even think of the word. But the study of the brain, neurology. Neurology. Um, and I'm, I'm so intrigued by it. I also studied, I minored in psychology. And one of the things that I noticed is like in the developmental stages of like childhood, it's typically like kinks and fetishes and like fantasies are linked to something that you witness. And, and this is not at all cases. This is just in some. They're linked to something that you witnessed in the childhood while you were going through puberty. Um, and that's one of the things where it makes it where you attach on to it, like, I want this, I need this. Um, and again, it's, it's those stages where if you enter into a stage too late, if you go too early, if you stay in it too long, then it becomes a quote unquote fetish. Um, but typical kinks, like some guys are turned on by the smell of hair, you know, like of the woman's hair burnt hair or whatever, like being flat ironed or blow dried or something like that. And what I found is that typically either their mom was a hairdresser or like their mom took them to the beauty shop with them. So of course, if you're, uh, you know, preteen or whatever, early teen and you're going through puberty and you're going with your mom, like that's something you around all these women is something that's going to heighten your arousal because you don't get that at home so it's in some cases it can be linked to things like that some cases it can be linked to movie i know my fantasy is to <laughs> like be in a in a like motel in the middle of nowhere like with the old flannel bedding and the old thin raggedy carpet i got ocd so when when i get married again my husband is gonna know he's gonna have to thoroughly get that room you know sanitize and everything but i want that setting the reason being is because when i was going through that age and those scary movies they would have sex scenes in those hotel rooms like the mm -hmm. abandoned hotels the ones with the vacancy no vacancies are you blinking so, on? Yes, like that's that's what mine I recognize mine is is uh, linked to. It's not to say, like I said, not for everyone. Nothing is black or white. Nothing is is finite. Like nothing is one size fit all. So that's just something to keep in mind. But I do wholeheartedly believe and know and think. Excuse me, that is triggered <laughs> to some of those things. She said, "I cannot." <laughs> hey, me. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's interesting. I guess I'm going to have to try to figure out what mine is. I don't know. Yeah, and explore. And let me know once you find out, like, is it linked to childhood? Is it linked to, like, a movie or something that you witnessed, something that you watched? Mm, now you got me thinking. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> mm.
So, yeah, because I guess we, we answered that. But, and I guess the other question was, uh, how, do, how do you explore, like, kink with someone who might not be as adventurous? As adventurous? Yeah, like, if they... That's... Go ahead. It's it's kind of hard to answer that because it's, it's are they open with it in the way that you if they are open, like you do it little by little, little by little, like introduce little by little, like you don't just, you know, have this kink, like, for example, with me in the middle of nowhere, like, and I'm not gonna show up you know, in a new relationship, like, hey, take me to Route 66, let's find a hotel, like a motel, you know, in the middle of nowhere. Like, no, you can't do that. You got to introduce it little by little. And I think when it come down to kinks and stuff like that, little by little. Mm -hmm. I agree. Um, how do you enjoy sex again after trauma or a bad partner ruined the pleasure? First place is heal. Before you do anything else, make sure you get the help that you need in order to heal. You cannot proceed forward. You can attempt to proceed forward, but it won't be as enjoyable or as pleasurable as it can be if, you know, you take the time to heal, get the help that you need, be with somebody who can actually um, professional help, seek professional help that can actually help you heal from that trauma. And that's the biggest thing. And and I think it's not a new partner's responsibility to walk on eggshells. I, I think there's some certain things you can be considerate of, but mm -hmm. not the entire experience to walk on eggshells to please someone else. I don't I don't think that's a good look at all. Mm. No, I love that. That's that's real. I totally agree with you. Oh my God, this was so power packed. I can keep going forever because I got a million and one questions. <laughs> <laughs> One other time, I want to respect your time. Uh, Sherelle, let everyone know how they can get in touch with you. Uh, you can get in touch with me on Instagram, Sherelle E. Thomas. You can just click on the drop down menu, hit follow. If you're not following me already, reach out that way. Um, my followers, if you're on here, make sure you follow Scary to Remarry because he, he dropped a lot of knowledge, a lot of good um, information on his page as well. But yeah, that's where you can find me. And ladies, it's not too late. I'll be doing my last workshop of the year and then I'm retiring this workshop, which is the art of blowing his mind. If you are interested, make sure you DM me below his mind and I can send you the link for you to join us for this last workshop and then I'm retiring it. It's actually my number one selling workshop, but I get tired of talking about the same things over and over and over again. I feel like it, it takes the enthusiasm out of it. And I think we didn't have this workshop probably like five times already. <laughs> but it's a game changer. We talk about squirting, how to squirt. We talk about how to ride. We talk about fellatio. We talk about, oh, the finish him technique that take him out the game every time. Mm -hmm. What else do we talk about in the art of blowing his mind? Um, Riding, squirting, orgasms, like how to have orgasms. Um, I think that's it. Like we, we talk about a lot. We cover everything. Everything that's needed in order to blow his mind and the art of blowing his mind. Ooh, oh my God. <laughs> Amazing. And also, I just dropped a, uh, a video course called uh, We're Not Making Love No More. Three. Mm have sex more than one day a week mm. i just dropped that so you can pick that up click the link in the bio as well um Sherelle, thanks again so much for being a guest and uh if there's anything that i can do for you just hit me up i know you're closing in on like a hundred thousand uh mm. followers Yes, I'm like, well, I've been at this 99.6 for like two weeks. Like, come on, peeps, <laughs> ready to celebrate. That was actually my goal to hit 100K by December 31st. And I've been hovering around this this 99 for, <laughs> it's been a minute. <laughs> hey, yeah, we're going to make sure we get you there. I'll help promote you as well, you know. Not like you really need my help, but I'm just saying. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, for sure. Well, Brave Arts community, you heard it here. Make sure you go follow Sherelle so she can hit that 100,000.
Make sure you visit the website at scarytoremarry.com. This is Sean Heineman with special guest. Sherelle Thomas. <laughs> hey, Y'all take care. Be blessed. Thank you, Sherelle. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. No problem. Bye. Bye.